through our project we completed six murals in highly tagged areas and I suppose areas that, that I think um, mainstream media in Australia like to talk about a lot. Um, Sunshine and St Albans, very heavily tagged areas and a, a lot of history of those areas being tagged so we through our six murals we, we touched on those areas. Um, there were 17 young people involved in our program through varied degrees um, and just one of the things I just wanted to indicate, I just wanted to kind of put out there as well. These young people, um, we were really um, keen to make sure that these young people were locals um, in our area. So as locals, they're residents of our community. Um, and what we kind of found with a lot of those young people is that um, there was a lack of community connectedness from those young people to the local area for varying degrees. And again, I think the gentleman from Rotary touched on some of that and, and there's a lot of interest in why young people may be disconnected um, from an area and why they feel there is a need to to illegally put graffiti in that area. So a lot of our program was to engage with those young people through young artists like um, uh, Seb and also our Youth Arts Officer Charlotte who has a lot of experience working with those young men. Lots of interest prior to getting the Dodge funding by young people in wanting to express themselves in legal art forms. And we also, when our program started, we knew there were referrals coming through court orders and some other local agencies that were engaging young people again who, who had other issues um, with um, illegal graffiti as part of those issues and some of those young people were referred to our program. Lots of community interest um, in, in, uh, in the program and, um, and trying to link young people into legal art forms in Brimbank. Um, part of that uh, resulted us in identifying the six sites. They are either um, community stakeholders, either community organisations who are a little bit more understanding of what we were of the young people that we're trying to work with or, or traders who we've done a lot of work with, not just with young people offending through illegal graffiti, but also through young people with antisocial behaviour around areas like Sunshine Train Station and St Albans Train Station. The aims, again, just in involving local young people in the program was a key aim. Um, and, and I think, again, a key aim for us and a really clear aim was um, to make moves from young people from illegal to legal art forms to provide that opportunity um, and again to remove some of those risks and, and again really fascinating area of, of risk taking which I think is very general, um, you know, it's, it's a well known fact that young people when they enter into the teenage years through to 17 it is a high period of risk taking so I, I see um, illegal graffiti as part of that but it obviously it's accentuated in some in some areas with young people uh, train surfing uh, and doing doing train carriages and taking lots of risks in certain areas. Um, key was again linking to youth arts mentors like Sebastian to uh, to, to work through those issues to, to develop skills bases to to have dialogue about what's happening in their lives apart from the graffiti um, and again a, a key was to young young people to feel connected to their communities. Uh, provision of legal spaces, we, we've, we've got uh, lots and lots of legal space, so the good thing post our Dodge funding is that we've got lots of keen areas, um, both council, non-council, traders, different organisations who are keen for us to, to uh, provide more legal spaces for young people to do their work. Um, Sib will talk a little bit about this, um, supporting pathways to other art opportunities and education. Not, um, not a lot of people will make the transition from, from say, doing a legal tag on a wall through to to, to doing an arts degree, but there is definitely a clear, clear pathway for some young people to do that, and um, our program fosters that as well. And that, that that's um, a, a good role modelling for some of those young people as well. Um, I think it's really interesting an area that again, lots of good dialogue occurs when the young people are actually doing their street art in the community. We, I see it as it's almost uh, probably a major part of the the program. It's the first time you'll actually get a chance for these young people who might have been producing illegal graffiti to have dialogue with the general public. And it's, it's, and it's definitely proven that there has been a reduction in the six walls that we've done so far. Not to say it's 100% it's foolproof because there's lots of reasons why some walls get tagged and sometimes it's other crews of young people catching trains and going to areas and going over murals and things like that. So it's a, how can I probably say, it's a, as we probably know, it's a very, um, a lot of pecking order and a very complex area, um, illegal graffiti. There's some of our young people. Um, Real Motley crew, and um, it was really good. And some of the, the mentoring that occurred, some of the natural mentoring, we've obviously got a young man there, he's in like 13 or so, but some of the older boys provided a good space for him to, to sort of pull his head in at times because he'd come in uh, um, at times bragging about things that he might have done. And part of our program was um, that we, you know, putting, you know, having a chat to him about what the program was trying to achieve and how that could undermine the program. Project delivery. Uh, 
really tight timeline, which <laughs> which was good and bad for our project because we we uh, the good part about it was that we got six pieces up really quickly, and I think the the, the media exposure and the exposure to our local member of parliament and to, to our administrators and the general community was great, and that we've kind of saturated Brimbank in some really high profile murals. So that's really put us in good stead for the future of program. Obviously, we, everyone's spoken about the varied weather <laughs> conditions. The value of mentors is undeniable um, about getting people who have sort of either been through 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 some through you know doing graffiti in the past and coming through and and sharing their skills. Yeah, presenting issues of some of the young people restricted participation. Like we had about 17 young people that came, but obviously anyone that's worked with a young person who might be having issues, they're issues that impact on a daily basis. So sometimes those young people wouldn't turn up. The, the opportunity for us to follow up was very limited because of the short time frame. So we really had to go with the young people that were probably a, a little bit more um, ahead of some of these young people. But the good thing about our program is sustainability is that, that we're continuing. And the program was, like I said before, going for a year before and will definitely be continuing um, in the future as well to try and pick up those kids. Uh, yeah, project manager um, and obviously someone who's got a, an arts background and Charlotte has, she's, she's an arts graduate herself but again through working at the City of Yarra in, in their urban art program a few years ago, she brought that along. So not just the knowledge of arts and where these young people are coming back and coming from but also challenging them and using different tools to express themselves rather than just a spray can. Um, and also, we probably for us as well, we use um, uh, professional artists uh, that young, the young people knew, and there was a lot of um, value in having those artists, and that the kids felt some integrity when they were doing their work. And because you've got such a broad range of skills when you're putting up a mural, the I idea was to get some of the kids with very basic skills to do some of the background work, and obviously working with the artists and learning some tips. But but then the artists would sort of finish that work, and so the young kids had a felt quite proud about. Um, completing a mural, say even Sebastian's a fantastic artist uh, that they were involved in that, so kind of lifted up their um, self-confidence as well. Um, that's one of our young um, young people with um, one of our artists, AJ. The next slide is one of our young people as well. 20 years um, experience for myself and Charlotte and, and also some of the research that we've done in that. Just removing graffiti doesn't work and I think a lot of people have said that there is a removal aspect to it but there's also putting up murals and getting varied members of the community, not just young people but adults, um, elderly, school children involved. I think it actually it does beautiful, beautify our area so there was lots of experience in that model. Um, staff and mentors bringing their experience. Um, there were young people that were just coming to us in regards to wanting to be involved in a street art project so we didn't have to go looking far for those young people. Um, obviously, again, going back to areas very heavily tagged um, and, and it, on the increase as well, we, we sort of uh, located the Busy Cares Hub um, near the Sunshine Library and the cinema there and those areas probably over the last few months and it's a different cohort of young people that are, are tagging around those areas and we, so the next part of our project will be to try and engage with them. Um, the great thing about us, we also had a space, a youth resource centre, where um, the young people would um, do weekly workshops to work on their designs and, and improving their skills. And I was just jotting down before I came up then, and that probably is a real key to our project in that uh, a lot of these kids are coming, coming to us and they're disengaged, so part of that having a group of people that they share a similar interest is great in, in, the, in, the, in graffiti and moving to legal art, but just socialising. So that's a kind of a closed workshop where these young people can hang out and then the mentoring takes uh, takes effect in the sense that kids can sort of be put in their place again if they're sort of being pro illegal graffiti, and that some of those rich discussions can occur about the move from illegal to legal art form. So that's a real key: having a space where young people can work and they can have ownership of that space. A um, number of potential sites and murals. Again, we've we've got more than enough sites. And, and again, the key for us was that we have capacity and we have the staff skills and experience to continue the project post-Dodge funding. We have a youth support team and we work really closely with other stakeholders, um, specialist services in Brimbank and out of Brimbank, because young people are coming to our program, but there's lots of other issues that some of these kids are presenting with, disengaged from school, disengaged from family, substance abuse. Not all our kids, but some do, so obviously it's trying to work with those kids and link them into the, the other supports that they need, which again was touching on some of the conversations we had before. We work on themes, um, it, and, and that's negotiating with whoever we're doing the war with, um, and also negotiating with the young people and our artists. So it is a challenge sometimes for the young, young people to make that move from 
you know, initially if they were doing their tag on, on the side of a train carriage um, through to a theme. So it takes a lot of work to get that area, but it's a really big step when it occurs. The project uh, timeline was tight, um, as I spoke before, but we, d we sort of did get through by the skin of our teeth. Um, as I indicated, some young people struggled to keep up with that pace, but we'll be looking to pick them up post the program. Value of older young people, mentoring young people, we've got an age range from anywhere from 12, 13 through to early 20s, so it's, it's really good because some of those young people, for varied reasons in their lives, don't have um, positive male role models in their life, either um, might be in single parent families, so it's good having young men like Sebastian who can fill the role of either older brother, uncle, uh, and those kind of kind of roles for those some of those young men and their positive role models.